Good morning. Thank you for joining me today for our time together in the Word of God. Today at Faith Baptist Church, we are having a communion worship service for our morning worship time. Uh, we'll be including a lot of music as a part of that service and a lot of scripture reading, as well as sharing some thoughts about communion and the cross. And while I won't be able to reproduce that whole service for you uh, this morning during our time together, I do want to share with you the four words that I'm going to share uh, that I want us to remember as we think about what communion means and what the cross means to us as well. Before I get to those four words, I'd like to read the text that we'll be looking at today, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 20 through 30. If you have your Bible, I invite you to open it to 1 Corinthians 11, and you can follow along as I read verses 20 through 30. Paul writes here, Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. For I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Well, as I mentioned, today at Faith Baptist Church, we'll be celebrating communion together as a part of a communion worship service for our morning worship time. As it says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 20, it says, when you come together. And so we celebrate communion as a, a time with the gathered body of Christ at church. And while we're not attempting to do that here online today, I do want to share with you four words uh, that are good for us to keep in mind to remind us about the cross, remind us about what the Lord's Supper or communion means to us. The first word is the word prepare. Now, as you read through this text in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, you discover that Paul is writing to this church in part because they were struggling with this area of communion or the Lord's Supper. My understanding is that uh, one of the traditions that they had as a church is that when they would gather together uh, with the ultimate purpose of celebrating communion or the Lord's Supper together, they would also have a fellowship meal, what we might call a carrion dinner, as a part of that as well. And it seems that as you read through this text that perhaps there was more emphasis being put on the carrion dinner than there was being put upon communion or the Lord's Supper. And so Paul here rebukes them for this. He said that some judgment had come upon them because of this. But he reminds them of the seriousness of being prepared when you come uh, to properly or to worship the Lord properly in communion. Evidently, the Corinthians were not doing that. And the result is that they were eating and drinking, as he says in verse 27, in an unworthy manner, and judgment had come upon them. Verse 30 says some of them were weak, some of them were sick, and even some of them, he says, were asleep, meaning they had died. This reminds me that God takes this serious. Paul was saying this is serious business. As we come to the time of communion, as we come to the Lord's table, we must properly prepare ourselves. Now Paul talks about this in verse 28 when he says, 
let a man examine himself and then take of the bread and take of the cup. Examination. Now, how, how do we examine ourselves? How do we prepare ourselves for communion? This might look a little different for different people as they seek to prepare their hearts and their minds for communion, but I think there are, are some questions that we can ask ourselves as we think about the Lord's Supper and preparing ourselves. The most important question is, am I a follower of Jesus? Am I a believer? You see, communion is a family time. Communion is a time for those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone for forgiveness of sin and eternal life, and therefore become a part of God's family, it's a time for, for the children of God then to celebrate what Jesus did for them. Really, communion has no meaning if a person is not a believer. And so part of proper preparation for communion is to examine yourself in light of the fact, have I placed my faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Have I admitted that I'm a sinner? And the Bible says that we're all sinners. Have I asked Jesus to forgive my sin based upon what he did through his death, burial, and resurrection? And have I put my complete faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone for salvation? Another question we could ask ourselves as we prepare is, is my heart pure? In other words, do I have unconfessed sin in my life? Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard or harbor sin or iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. We need to come before the throne of God when we worship. We need to come to the communion table when we worship in this way with a heart that is pure. It says in Hebrews 10, verse 22, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. And this is a picture of, of what Jesus does when he forgives our sin based upon the shed blood of Jesus. Another question we can ask as we examine ourselves and prepare is, am I at, or, or, excuse me, am I at peace in my relationships? Now, certainly we need to be at peace in our relationship with God, but I believe also we need to be at peace in our relationships with one another. We should not be living in conflict with others as we come to worship the Lord at the Lord's table. We can also ask, is my focus on Jesus Christ? One of the things that Paul writes about here, he says, is, is that not um, properly considering the Lord's body in other words, our focus needs to be on Jesus when we come to the communion table. And we can ask, do I have an attitude of worship? Is my focus on Jesus and worshiping him alone instead of looking at myself? And then the question, am I walking in obedience? Am I serving the Lord as I should? Am I seeking to follow what God's word tells me to do? Uh, for instance, have I been obedient in the matter of believer's baptism? Having placed my faith in Jesus, have I uh, obediently uh, followed through with uh, baptism by immersion as a testimony of my faith in Jesus Christ? All of these things are things that we can do and should do to prepare ourselves for communion. The second word that I want you to think about this morning is the word remember. Paul uh, records Jesus' words about communion uh, when he writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 and 25, speaking of Jesus, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Two times he writes there in those two verses, do this in remembrance of me. So communion is primarily a time to remember, a time to, to look backward, if you will, and to remember. Now, what are we supposed to remember? Well, I think the focus here is clearly on Jesus Christ. And so we are to remember some things about him. We are to remember Jesus's life because his perfect life on this earth is an example for us. 
Peter said in 1 Peter 2, To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. John wrote in 1 John 2, 6, He who says he abides in him ought himself to walk just as he walked. So we remember the perfect example of Jesus and then seek to follow it. We also remember Jesus' death. And his death, as we've already mentioned, was for our sin. His death was a, as a substitute for us. Jesus died in our place. Romans 5, 8 tells us that God demonstrates his love to us in this way, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In Isaiah chapter 53, uh, Isaiah writes about the fact that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. We need to remember that Jesus took our place. His death was a substitute for us. And then we also need to remember Jesus' resurrection because his re resurrection is our life. Jesus said in John eleven twenty five, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Now, all of this together is the gospel, as we've already mentioned. 1 Corinthians 15 says that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Without the gospel of Jesus Christ, without the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus that we remember when we celebrate communion, without that, we have no salvation. And without salvation, we have no communion because we have nothing to remember. And so as we come to the Lord's table, number one, we are to prepare ourselves even before we come. Number two, we are to remember what Jesus did for us. The third word is the word watch. It says in verse 26 of 1 Corinthians 11, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Now, we already mentioned that communion is a part of what we do as a gathered church when we come together. We don't do it every Sunday in our church, but we do have communion on a regular basis because it says, as often as you do this. So it's supposed to be a regular thing. But communion is something that we're going to do during this age, but we won't do when we get to heaven. We don't need to do it when we get to heaven anymore because we will be in the presence of Jesus and we'll have that to remind us of what he did for us. But he says to do it until he comes again. So until Jesus returns, while we're here on this earth, in our churches, our local churches, we celebrate communion. We do it until Jesus comes again. But that's a reminder that we are to be watching for the return of Jesus. While we worship through communion, we watch because Jesus is coming again. And we don't watch for him simply because that will signal the end of the church age as we know it. And it'll signal the end of worshiping by communion because we won't uh, need to do that anymore. We watch because we're anticipating the return of Jesus Christ. Jesus promised in John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus promised to come again. And for those who are believers, those who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus will come to take us home to be with him in heaven. So we are to watch for his coming. His coming is our hope. I love the words of Titus chapter 2 where Paul writes, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We live today on this earth. We worship on this earth. And while we do, we look, we watch for the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Even so come, Lord Jesus. So prepare, remember, watch, and then the fourth word is rejoice. 
Finally today, I want to leave you with this word, rejoice, because communion is a time for us to look upward, watching for the return of Jesus. But as we look upward and watch, we are joyfully thanking God for what he has done for us through Jesus. Just the simple truth of John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's something to be rejoice about. That's something to be joyful about. Communion, then, is a time to joyfully worship Jesus, to joyfully worship God for who he is. We need to remember as we worship around the communion table that God is holy and great. He is merciful and gracious. He is loving and kind and awesome and forgiving and protecting and providing. And the list goes on and on and on. Yes, Communion is a solemn time as we remember Jesus' death. But we rejoice because without his death, without the cross, we do not have forgiveness. We do not have salvation. And we rejoice because Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. And his rising from the dead proves that he's God and proves that he has provided for us eternal life. He's powerful enough not only to rise from the dead, He's powerful enough to forgive your sins and my sins. So communion is truly a time to rejoice and to say hallelujah for the cross of Jesus Christ. So four words to remember as we think about communion. Prepare. We must prepare ourselves as we come to the Lord's table, just as we should prepare ourselves every week as we come to worship. Remember. Because communion is a time to remember the death of Jesus Christ and his burial and his resurrection, what he did for us when his, his body was broken on the cross and when his blood was shed for us. Watch. Watch for the return of Jesus because Jesus is coming again. And then rejoice as you worship the Lord through communion when you're able to do that in your local church. Rejoice in the fact that Jesus provided salvation for you, and that Jesus is coming again. I hope that these four simple words will just be a way for you to remember the importance of communion. It's important to do because Jesus told us to do it when we come together, and it will help you to worship God more effectively as you worship him through communion. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Lord's Supper or communion that you in your grace gave us this object lesson to remind us of who you are, to remind us of what Jesus has done, and to remind us to worship you. Thank you, Lord, that as we take the bread, we are reminded that Jesus really did physically suffer and die for us. And thank you that as we take the cup, that we are reminded that Jesus really did shed his blood so that we might have forgiveness. Lord, I pray that if there's anyone listening today that has never become a part of God's family, they've never turned from their sins and turned to Jesus, that even in this quiet moment while I'm praying, from their heart they'll call out to you and seek your forgiveness as they turn from their sins and put their complete and total faith and trust in you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving our souls through Jesus Christ. And thank you that we can remember through the Lord's Supper. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. I know the message was a little bit different today uh, because of the subject matter, but I hope that once again that the truth that we've thought about from God's Word will be an encouragement to you and will help you to worship the Lord more faithfully and more effectively. And I hope you'll join me again. Thanks again. Until next time. Goodbye.